I want to welcome you to worship here at Farmington Lutheran Church. Um, you're important, and as a community of Christ's people, uh, we are given a call, that's what we heard last week, to care for each other, to care for the world that God has made, be those disciples of Jesus Christ. Uh, a number of years ago, and many times since, I was doing some premarital counseling with uh, people, and we would have conversations, and I would say to the young man, I would say, do you love her? And he would look at her with these puppy eyes and kind of, you know, gosh, gee whiz. And he would turn to me and he'd say, well, yes. And then I'd ask the girl and she would do the same thing and she would pause and said, yes. I said, okay, now what do you mean by that? And, and neither one of them had any word to describe that. Well, in our worship today, in our worship today, we're going to hear something very familiar about God calling us to love one another. And, and at times we think, oh, here we go again. We heard the same old, same old stuff. But this worship service hopefully will help all of us understand uh, more deeply, more uh, intimately, what love means when Jesus says, love one another. Um, and that's our call. That's our call as a witness of Jesus Christ today. So again, welcome to our time of worship. And our call to worship then uh, continues. God of life, you are as near to us as our breath. Touch our eyes that, that we, we may, may see you, you in, in one, one another. another. Open our ears that, that we, we may hear your, your voice in the, the cries of the, of the oppressed. oppressed. Enter our hearts that, that we, we may be filled, filled with, with your love Toward toward all, all people. people. Come, O God, of life and breath and wholeness. Be, Be with, with us now. now. Show, Show us the way to new life, life and, and grant us the courage to be people, people of, of your, your way. way. join together in confession and forgiveness. Today we hear God's invitation again to let go of all those things that keep us captive, the things we have left undone and those things that we have done to hurt ourselves, our neighbor, and God. Loving and generous God, you are the font of every blessing, the source of all we have. Your breath gives us life. Your love, Your love gives, gives us, courage us courage and strength, and strength healing and compassion. and compassion. You care for us like a loving parent and feed our spirits, our minds, and our bodies. We thank you for your abundance given freely to all. But God, forgive us for wanting more, even when we have more than we need. 
create in us new hearts to love our neighbors as much as we love ourselves. Help us to know that our abundance is for others' needs. Great teacher, write your law on our hearts. God's abundance is enough for all if we share. Hear this good news. God knows the things we have done and left undone. God knows our very thoughts, and yet God promises us a new life, a new beginning. Our sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to welcome, especially the children at this time, as a way uh, to uh, begin an extended message. This is Labor Day weekend, and Labor Day weekend we talk about work. So one of the things I hope all of us will remember after this worship service is that the work that you and I have, the work that we all have, whether you be five years old or four years old or 55 or 95, whatever age you are, Wherever, wherever uh, you are living, the work that you and I have is this, that we love one another. Now, last week we heard from a letter from John, 1 John, and that's where this comes from, that phrase. So I want you to say it after me. We're going to learn to memorize that so it really becomes part of our thinking. Well, I'll say it again. Ready? Love one another. Let's say it together. Love one another. Now, as a teacher, I would say, let's repeat that. So, love one another. You think you got that? Good. So, how do we do that? How do we do that? You know, we, we, we've heard before, well, we could bring food to a food pantry. That's loving one another. You can uh, bake cookies for your children. That's loving one another. But I want to extend that so that we begin to see that happening in our everyday life. I, let's say you go to a restaurant, and yes, restaurants you can go to to either take out or sit outside at tables. I was at a restaurant with my grandson this afternoon, and we sat at one of the un tables. There were a bunch of them with X's on them, and we sat at the others. There was only two other people in the restaurant, and we ate. And what, it's, what, uh, what showed me the, this love is the way the, the person at the, at the other side of the counter not only took my order, but was careful in preparing it and kind in giving it to me. I think that was how the, he showed God's love to me in his service. I know a lot of nurses. Uh, I know what they do for love. They show love when they care for people who are hurting. They are willing to be places, doctors, nurses, first responders, where some of us are afraid to go. That's love. That's what it looks like, folks. Willing to go to places that maybe others are afraid to go because they want to care for someone who's hurting. Or how about home builders? Okay, let me see if I have something here. Yep, home builders. Now, this is typically a tool I use on my computer and other electronic devices in order to get them working better, but some people will use it to make safe houses and homes for people to live in and, and, and to be safe in. And how about, well, maybe some of you aren't building houses, but maybe some of you are playing games, basketball or baseball or soccer or whatever it might be, maybe run. And how do you show God's love? Maybe it's, I know one girl, and I th- she may have been down from this area running the state uh, cross-country meet, and one girl fell down. 
and another girl running the meet to win stopped. And she picked up the girl, she helped her up, and they crossed the finish line together. I think that was the way she showed God's love. When we play games, we can include people in the games instead of having someone standing off to the sideline. I was usually the smallest, and when they were picking teams for baseball, guess what? I was always the last to be picked. That's hard to be. Let me fix this microphone here. I know how, whoa, I know how one person is showing love. Greg's showing me love back here by making sure everything works right. So when we play games, we can show Christ's love, the love of Jesus, by just being kind. We include others in the game. Or how about this? This is a job. Going to school. Reading books. Growing in your knowledge of not just the world that God has created, but growing in the knowledge of yourself and others and how you fit into that world and how you could be God's love to other people. That's another way of doing it. Here's one thing I found at church. I think this is the work of people who show God's love when they put together these packets for children. The time that goes into that, the thinking of the other person. That's all how we show God's love. Remember the Bible verse again? What is it? Love one another. That's the work that you and I have that we've been given by Jesus. So please pray with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for giving me the work to love others. May you bless that work. May you give me the words to speak your love. May you give me the strength to show that love each and every day. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. A reading from Romans. The obligation of Christians is to love one another and so fulfill the heart and goal of the law. Clothes make the person as we put on the Lord Jesus Christ and live today in light of the future God has in store for us. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to your neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling in drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. This is Labor Day weekend, like I said, so let's move on or expand here. And I'm going to ask the rest of you there, and those could be children but adults as well, what's the hardest job that you ever had? What was, what's the hardest job that you ever had? Can you think of it? Take some time. Now, maybe use some time to share that with each other um, and, and describe what made that hard for you. I, one came to my mind. I had a lot of hard jobs, but one in particular, I worked at a college, and I remember I said I was usually the smallest being picked for a, a, a sports team. So I was a small person, and I worked on the boiler crew. And at that time, they had boilers that had circular 
insides. And the guy I worked for said, all right, go inside there and clean it out. And I said, what? And he said, yeah, take this tool. It was a metal rod with a metal scraper. And he said, I want you to go in there, and I want you to scrape the sides, go in a circle, and scrape the sides of the boiler. Oh, here's a mask. You may need it. Well, I don't know about you. I just discovered what's inside boilers that aren't working to heat. They, when they don't do that, they're just filled with what is called soot. So I scraped this thing. I didn't know if that soot was good for me or not. I just did what I was told, and I worked, and, and I went to the cafeteria to eat lunch. They wouldn't let me in. Because so when I sat down on, this, on the step waiting for it to open up, it was like a pile of black dirt. And the person who was running the cafeteria said, you can't come in here. That was one of the hardest, and it was hot and dirty. And, and even going home to take a shower, my mom would say, uh, you're, you're doing all that stuff outside in the yard. We'll get a hose. That was a hard job. So did you come up with yours? What made it hard? What was it? I believe the hardest job, though, out of everything that you and I could come up with, I think the hardest job, you ready for this, is to love. Now, we want to make love very sentimental, like, oh, gee whiz, you know, oh, here's, here's a light a candle, here's a flower. I think it's hard to love. It really is. I've had people come up to me and they say, Pastor, is it okay to like someone but not love someone? And I have to admit, at first I said, yeah, that's, that's what God, God said, that's okay. You can like them, but you don't have to love them. And I, over the years, I've given that a lot of thought. And as I keep hearing God in, in Scripture, and I've now said this, no, we are called to love. We may not like everything that person does. We may not like their personality, but we are still called to love them. Wow, that's hard, right? I think you all know that. There are people probably that you could name right now that you would have a hard time loving. But let me give you what it looks like, and you tell me if it makes it any easier. Something that we've all heard a lot of. Paul writes about this all the time. In fact, if you read the letters of Paul, it usually ends up where he comes down to one thing, and here it is. Love is, and he describes it, he unpacks it. He doesn't just leave it as a sentimental, oh, isn't that sweet and nice. He says, love is patient. Ah, that sounds more concrete. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. Think of those people that we are called to love even though we don't like them. Can we still love them? And not be rude? It does not insist, the love does not insist on its own way. Think of all the arguments you have at home, which ends up being about you getting your own way. Love is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. That's what makes love hard. Here's another, from another Paul letter, to the church in Ephesus, Ephesians. Some of you in Owls have been studying this. Some of you in our youth ministry here are studying it right now. Chapter 4 is one of my favorite chapters. So then, putting away falsehood, Here's what love looks like. Let us all speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. I don't know how many times my parents said, don't forget to say, I love you, before you go to bed. Do not make room for the devil. Thieves give up stealing. Rather, let them work honestly with their own hands. 
Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up. As there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. The imitators of God live in love. Live this way. Live the way that Christ has lived for you. That he gave himself up for you. That's love. Willing to give yourself up for the sake of others. I'll go back to that marriage example. When couples say, I will love and honor you, one of my assignments in the past has always said, I want you to go home this, go home this week, and I want you to honor the other person. But don't tell them you're doing it. When we come back next week, I'm going to ask each other, how did you feel honored that week? I didn't ask the person how they honored the other one. I said, I, I want to know how you felt being honored. And it's interesting how something as simple as that, and, and it does usually heighten the awareness of people, how that somehow is lost, forgotten. We have a job to do, folks. We really do. And we know what the job is. That's what's, that's what's so interesting is that we actually know what the job is, and God gives us enough uh, concrete ways to understand what that job is. God doesn't just say, go love one another. God says, love one another in this way, and this is how you can do it, and I'll show you how to do it. Ah, that's where Jesus becomes crucial. It's not just the words, it's his actions. Love is spoken and acted out, both at the same time at times, but certainly both used. And Christ's actions have always been, come unto me all you are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Christ's action have always been, Father forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Christ's actions have always been, you are no longer strangers, you are no longer enemies, you are my friends. Christ's actions have always been love. We have the job now. It's been handed to us. The job description is clear. Let's get to work. Let us love one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Draw together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Unite your church, O God. Grant us the gift of repentance and reconciliation. Bless the cooperative work 
of churches in this community, especially our common loaves and fishes ministry. Strengthen economical partnerships, guide the work of the Lutheran World Federation and the World Council of Churches. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Protect your creation, O God. Teach us ways that do not harm what you have entrusted to our care. Renew and enliven places suffering from drought, flood, storms, fires, or pollution. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Turn nations and leaders from ways that lead to death. Shape new paths towards peace and cooperation. Teaching us to recognize one another as neighbors. Guide legislatures, civil servants, judges, and police towards laws that protect the well-being of all. Lord, in your mercy. Tend to all in need of your compassion. Hear the cries of those awaiting justice and those yearning for forgiveness. Give community to the lonely and neighbors to the outcast. Shelter all who are vulnerable in body, mind, or spirit, especially those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain us in our work, O God, and give work to those who need it. Shape societies to ensure fair treatment for all who labor. Help us to love our neighbors in and through our work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving those who have died in faith. As you equip them, equip us with your protection and power until with them we see your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please pray with me the prayer that the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Here at Offering Time is a time for us to respond to God with thanks for all that we've been blessed with. It's an also an opportunity for us to join in and further that mission of love. And so thank you for your partnership in this ministry. Thank you for uh, all the ways that your generosity shows to further God's mission in this world. And so uh, thanks whether it's giving through um, at in-person worship or through the mail or text to give or automated giving or all the other ways you use your gifts to show God's love and further God's mission in this world. And so blessings to you as we consider now the ways that we offer our gifts to further God's mission in the world.
Let's join together in the offertory prayer. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Blessings to you. It's great to worship with you on this Labor Day weekend. And as we come now to the uh, conclusion of our worship time and called to go out and further God's mission in the world, I want to lift up um, a couple of announcements. One is, um, we are a congregation that has the blessing of lots of baptisms, but we haven't had nearly as many of those the past few months. And so if you or someone that you know is, and is excited about that possibility of baptism, we want to invite you to a baptism orientation. We'll be coming up here on Wednesday, September 9th at 6.30 uh, here at uh, Farmington Lutheran Church. And so if you're interested in that, I invite you just to help our planning uh, to contact the church office. Uh, so again, that's baptism orientation, Wednesday, September 9th at 6.30 at Farmington Lutheran Church. I want to share with you a little bit about uh, schedule here on Labor Day weekend. Uh, we are not having on-site in-person worship. And from now until... Forever, pretty much. I think we're always going to have online worship, and it's a great way to connect with you. I also want to invite you for more in-person worship. Our schedule on September 13th will be two worship services, and notice the later service time changes. We're going to gather for worship at 8.30, and then again at 10.30. And that uh, is going to be our schedule from uh, September 13th through mid-October. And then our hope is, if all things go well, uh, to then have indoor worship and programming after that. I want to say a little bit more about September 13th. Uh, it's a tradition we have called Celebration Sunday, a great way to celebrate how oh, God is at work in this community. And so come out uh, and be a part of that day. And I'm excited to announce also on that day, we'll have a service of beginning. Uh, this year we are blessed to be part of the internship program from Luther Seminary. And so on that day, it'll be a chance for us to have a service of beginning for intern pastor Sarah Jensen. And uh, we're filming this on a Monday, and Sarah actually began her first day uh, today. So uh, I'm excited for this year that we'll share in together, and I'm excited for you to meet here. So come on out and be a part of that service of beginning on Sunday, September 13th. Well, as we go, receive this blessing for your journey. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.